I'm Joe Rafael in Toxicology, and this is Mas, Thiago Oliveira Silva. Albert's work's name is Critical Literacy in English Speaking Course. His work was based upon the PIBIX project that we have here uh, at UFS, and whose coordinator is Professor Ana Karina. Uh, the project, uh, the duration of the project is 40 hours, and we have three groups of 15 participants each. Uh, we have a group for morning, one group for afternoon, and one group for the evening. So this way we can embrace the whole community, uh, the internal community, the, the, uh, the, univer the university, and also the, the external community. So in each group we have five UFS language students, five UFS workers, and five members of the external community. Uh, the aims of the project are develop language students' proficiency, provide space for meaningful use of English, and promote critical reflection and local global citizenship awareness. Uh, this project was uh, thought of in the light of critical literacy and, as we said before, uh, thinking of this local and global awareness and also multimodality uh, as we think that we should support the, the, the discussions using as many genres we can and the communicative approach in the sense that since it's uh, an English speaking course then we should think that communication is over the grammar is upon the grammar um, well and when we were planning those classes um, that we prefer to call meetings. Uh, we took into consideration um, many things when we were selecting the themes, when we were selecting the material and the activities. Um, we proceeded to a meetings analysis of the students, uh, the participants' interests, expectations, and background. Um, we also had a, a state of permanent uh, assessment. So every meeting that we had, we were um, analyzing what the students brought to class, you know, their suggestions. And with that in mind, we um, thought out the, the, the classes the class and the meetings. And we also had periodical meetings. Every 15 days we would meet, me, Diogo, and Professor Karina, so that we could discuss what our future classes could be. Um, in terms of performance, performance, the activities that we performed in the meetings were uh, open discussions. We had pair work activities, Q&A, questions and answers, role playing, problem solving activities, describing tasks, information gap tasks, and retelling and reporting. Some of the themes that we um, approached were stereotypes, money, traveling, success, art, appearances, global warming, marriage, movies, parapsychology, reading habits, health, education. So you can see that we covered uh, a number of uh, subjects. And the genres that we adopted um, were also, uh, we had a lot of them. So in terms of text genres, we had news stories, articles, short stories, flashcards, movie trailers, movie summaries, movie reviews, cartoons, protest signs. And in terms of oral genres, we had testimonials, presentations, uh, reports, and interviews. So we tried as much as possible to bring a variety of activities and themes to class so that we could um, cover a different backgrounds and different interests from different students. Here uh, we chose uh, three sample classes to talk about, to illustrate uh, the way we used uh, our theoretical inspiration. And um, these classes were the, the ones that we talked about marriage, the one that we talked about parapsychology, and the one about stereotypes. Uh, here's like a, um, a, an idea of the, the, the class plan that we had for the marriage class. We started uh, with a warm up with uh, some Q&A. We checked on the students, on the participants' previous experience on the subject. So we, qu we asked questions about uh, their mar marital status, if they were married, if they were single. Um, some students shared personal experiences, for example, so one of the students had recently broken up with her boyfriend, so yes. And she, we, it was kind of an intervention <laughs> because um, she was kind of fragile at the moment and everything. 
And then we moved on to an activity of individual speech and uh, combined with an open discussion activities. We would draw out of a bag some questions about uh, marriage, about relationships, and the students who would draw out the, the slip of paper with the question would give their personal opinion about it, and then the discussion would go around the class, you know, everybody would give their um, opinion on the, on the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we moved on to a peer work activity in which they had to interpret and present some protest signs. So we brought to class some examples of protest signs about uh, same-sex marriage, and some of the signs were uh, for uh, gay marriage, and some signs were against gay marriage, and they would have to analyze the signs and re-explain the signs, what they understood, you know, from the signs to the rest of the group. And finally, the problem-solving task was a task in which, in which they had to rearrange couples. They had some people with, uh, they were married people, it's a hypothetical activity, married people and they were unhappy uh, about their marriage, so they wanted to rearrange, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, some were single too. Some were single, yes. And they had to rearrange the couples according to their personality. So it was a, a group activity in which they had to perform this task together. So <laughs> come to a solution for this problem. Um, here are some examples of the slips of paper with the questions that we used. For example, each contained a question and a, and a picture. Should a couple stay together for the children's sake? Is marriage something that's still important these days? Um, for the individual speech, um, some of the controversial uh, statements that we used. Hooking up with cousins is not a sin if there is love in it. People would have to comment on that. Long distance relationships can last no matter how much technology or love you have. So another uh, controversial topic. Here are some examples of the protest signs that we used. Can I vote on your, on your marriage? Would you rather I marry your daughter? Um, more examples. You know, Diogo is going to talk about uh, the other classes. Um, the other class, there is a sample of the class that we brought is Sparse Psychology, which I must confess which was, was my favorite class, because uh, in the meeting, uh, at the beginning we had an open discussion and we had a lot of sharing from the students from their, their personal experiences. We discussed a lot about horoscope, uh, superstitions about knowledge, and some talked about countryside stories like werewolves and once you had one student who, who yes she shared the story in which Henry UFO you know not, not, not landed like hovered over her a backyard and this you know testimony was very controversial <laughs> <laughs> um, the individual presentation with paranormal abilities which I'm going to show you in a, in a minute and information got me telling uh, they they got um, either the beginning of or the ending of horror short stories and they had to retell those stories to everyone until they found who, who had either the beginning or the ending of their own stories uh, in here uh, the text of the paranormal abilities uh, this telepathy they got those papers and they had to to explain to their partners uh, about the those what was, were those abilities and we also had post cognition. Uh, it was very interesting because we could also discuss the, the limits of science. Is science the only source of knowledge? It, uh, can science explain everything that we have in the world? Uh, and it was very interesting. Uh, yes, I don't know if we have time to talk about the stereotypes. Uh, the stereotypes, uh, we, Minutes? Okay, no so, more about stereotype awareness. Uh, which we had a, an opening just, uh, with three questions. Uh, then we brainstorm using stereotypes uh, like Caipirinha uh, and Feijoada, like uh, Valkyria said uh, yesterday. We eat Feijoada every day, <laughs> and especially for breakfast, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, video we, we brought a video from the cartoon The Seekers. They come to Brazil and they stereotype Brazil a lot. At first, the, the participants were kind of shocked, but at the end, uh, they, they, were, they were thinking and they said things like, uh, Well, it's not good, I don't like what they show, but it's kind of true. You know, uh, they're not telling any lies. 
Uh, and then we had an open discussion about a recent uh, a story, a local story that we had here at the airport with a, a woman, a, a woman who was going for a honey honeymoon trip, but she got late, and she she had uh, the doorman was black, and she took it out on him. I can go because he's black, and we had a small discussion on that. Okay, and to conclude our presentation, uh, we would like to um, say that what about critical literacy we used in our meetings? First of all, this was supposed to be an advanced English-speaking uh, group, but in the end we found out that most students were not advanced students. They were kind of intermediate, um, pre-intermediate, upper-intermediate, so most of them were intermediate students. And we realized that most of them um, had to overcome their um, difficulty in using English, you know, when communicating, because they were so eager to participate in the com in, in the discussions that they kind of, you know, tried to neutralize their shyness and their uh, uh, their grandma <coughs> difficulties in order to participate in the discussions. So, in terms of, we felt that the the themes. Uh, touched the students, you know, they were relevant for the students, especially because we took into consideration their suggestions. And um, in terms of teaching experience, it was uh, very rewarding for us because we had the chance to help people develop their proficiency and also to help people uh, think about these subjects, you know, because they are subjects that we discuss sometimes, but we forget to bring them to our reality, to our local reality. So we felt that this helped and also it helped us, you know, I improve as teachers because we improved our planning abilities, our teaching abilities, and um, in terms of future developments, uh, the group still continues, you know, we still have this group this semester, and some of the students who participated in the previous semester are with us right in the semester, and um, we hope that this experience will help us uh, improve this, not only in terms of giving the students a language for them to discuss more subjects, more adequately, and, but also, is it over? Okay. <laughs> but also to, co to, to continue contributing for critical thinking. So this is our project.